Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the new work meets. I am Darus Muhammad Nakib, your new host for today. Okay, so let's begin with our first topic. The economy background of USA. The United States of America, commonly known as the United States of America, is a country composed of 50 states and federal districts, five major self-governing territories, and various positions. The United States is the third world of fourth largest country by total area and, slight, and slightly smaller than the entire continent of Europe. The capital is Washington, D.C., and the largest city by population is New York City. 48 states and the capital federal district are contiguous in North America between Canada and Mexico. The U.S. territory are scattered by the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea, stretching across nine official time zones. The extremely diverse geography, climate, and wildlife of the United States make it one of the world's 17 mega diverse countries. The current population of the United States of America is 328 million of Saturday, April 6, 2019, based on the latest United Nations estimate. The United States population is equivalent to 4.37% of the world population. The U.S. ranks number three in the list of country and dependency by population. The population density in the United States is 36 per kilometer per square, or 93 people per mile. The total land area is 9,147,420 km per square and 83.9% of the population is urban. The median age in the United States is 37.8 years. So now let's move on to our next topic, which is the condition of the country. Thank you, Darius. Let's, let's move on to our next topic, which is the condition of the country and economic data. Before we move on to the economy data, let's let us know what the meaning of GDP is. GDP means gross domestic product. It is the monetary value of all the finished goods and services produced within a country's borders in a specific time period. Though GDP is usually calculated on an annual basis, it can be calculated on a quarterly basis as well. In the United States, for example, the government releases an annualized GDP estimate for each quarter and also for an entire year. GDP includes all private and public consumption, government outlays, investment, private inventories, paid-in construction costs, and the foreign balance of trade. Exports are added, imports are subtracted. Put simply, GDP is a broad measurement of a nation's overall economic activity. It may, it may be contrasted with gross national product, which measures the overall production of an economy's citizens, including those living abroad, while domestic production <coughs> by foreigners is in excluded. The United States economy maintains its half hour house status through a combination of characteristics. The country has access to abundant natural resources and a sophisticated physical infrastructure. It also has a large, well-educated and productive workforce. Moreover, the physical and human capital is fully leveraged in a free market and business-oriented environment. The government and the people of the United States both contribute to this unique economic environment. The government provides political stability, a functional legal system, and a regulatory structure that allows the economy to flourish. The general population, including a diversity of immigrants, bring a solid work ethic, as well as a sense of entrepreneurship and risk taken to the mix. Economic growth in the United States is constantly being driven forward by ongoing innovation, research and development, as well as capital investment. Next, let's move on to the next topic, which is the GDP growth, or using uh, economic data of the US. The United States economic growth in five years in 2016 has been the slowest one recorded as quarter data dragged onto the economy in the fourth quarter. They managed to recover, but it was a steady recovery rather than a spectacular one. However, as seen in the chart, the GDP around after 2018 has been slowing down 
despite facing challenges at the domestic level along with a rapidly transforming global landscape. The U.S. economy is still the largest and most important in the world. The U.S. economy represents about 20% of the total global output and is still larger than that of China. Moreover, according to the IMF, the U.S. has the sixth highest per capita GDP. The U.S. economy features a highly developed and technologically advanced services sector, which accounts for about 80% of its output. The U.S. economy is dominated by services-oriented companies in areas such as technology, financial services, healthcare, and retail. Large U.S. corporations also play a major role on the global stage with more than a fifth of companies in Fortune Global 500 coming from the United States. And now let's move on to the next topic, which is the review on the inflation problem. Hello, my name is Muhammad Amir Mokomoyini and my partner, my name is Muhammad Arifidas Robert Tajidi. We are going to talk about inflation rate in USA economy. Yes. Inflation. What is inflation? Inflation is a quantity measure of the rate at which is a uh, average price level of a basket of selected goods and services in economy increase over a period of time. It is the quantum rise in general level of price where a unit of currency buys less than it did in the previous periods. After expressed as a percentage, inflation indicates a decrease in the purchasing power of a nation currency. Understanding inflation. As a price, as a price rise, a rising unit of currency lost value as a buy few goods and services. This loss of purchase power impact of the general cost of living for the common public, which ultimately leads to the deterioration in economic growth. The consensus view among economists is the sentence inflation occurs with a nation money supply growth outspace economic growth. To combat this, a country operates monetary authority like a central bank and then keep then takes the necessary measure to keep inflation within permissible limit and keep the economy running smoothly. Inflation is a measure in a variety of ways depending upon the type of good and service considered and is the opposite of deflection which indicate a general decline occurring in the price for goods and service when inflation rate fall below zero percent. There are two main causes of inflation in the USA. The first, of course, is demand pool condition drive widespread price increase. The second cause of inflation result from cost, cost push factor. Some people think an uh, expansion of the money supply is the third cause of inflation, but it is actually a type of demand pool. Demand pool inflation. Demand pool inflation is the most common cause of a rising price. This occurs when demand for a good or service increases so much that it outstrips supply. If sellers don't write the price, it, they, they will sell out. The soon realize they have the luxury of hiking up price. If enough I do this, they create inflation. There are two circumstances that create demand for inflation. The first is marketing and new technology create demand for inflation for specific product for asset classes. The assets inflation the result can drive widespread prices increases. Asset and waste inflation are type of inflation. For example, Apple. Brand recommend high price for its product. New technology also occur in the form of financial delivery type and it create a boom, a bicycle in the housing market in 2005. The second point is over expansion of the money supply also can create demand through inflation. The money supply is not just a cash, but also credit, loans, and mortgage. When the money supply expand, it lowers the value of dollar when the dollar declines relative to value of foreign currency. The price of import rise. In the long run, it also triggers cost push inflation. Company that import material may need to rise their price to cover the increased cost of their supplies. Alright, the second cost of inflation is Cost push inflation. When a country lowers its currency uh, exchange rates, it creates cost push inflation imports. The that makes foreign goods more expensive compared to local produced goods. 
It only occur when there is a supply shortage combined with enough demand to allow the producer to raise prices. There are five contributors to inflation on supply side. The first is wage inflation that increases salaries. It rarely occurs without creative labor unions. Second, the Fed can raise the reserve requirement. That's the amount bank must keep in reserve at the end of each day. Increasing this reserve keeps money out of circulation. Third, the Fed can raise the discount rate. That's the interest rate that Fed charge to allow banks to borrow funds from the Fed's discount window. The Fed rarely modified these two tools. It usually changes the Fed funds rate. It, it is the interest rate banks charge for loans that they make to each other to maintain the reserve requirement. That is much easier for the Fed to modify. It has the same effect as changing the reserve requirement and discount rate. The next contributor is government regulation and taxation. Government regulation and taxation also reduce supplies. In 2018, U.S. tariff reduced supplies of imported steels that create shortage in manufacturing part, with some producers raising prices. In 2008, subsidies to produce corn ethanol reduced the amount of corn available for food. This shortage creates food price inflation. Alright, next I would like to talk about how U.S. control their inflation. Alright, first of all, the primary job of Federal Reserve is to control inflation while avoiding a recession. It does deal with monetary policy. To control inflation, the Fed must use contractionary monetary policy to slow economic growth. If the GDP, gross domestic product growth rate, is more than the ideal of 2 to 3 percent, excess demand can generate inflation by driving up prices for few goods. There are some tools that have been taken by Federal Reserve used to control inflation. The Fed has several tools it traditionally used to implement contractionary monetary policy. It only does that this if it suspect inflation is getting out of hand. Its line of defense is open operation. The Fed buys or sells securities, typically treasury notes, from its member banks. It buys securities when it wants them to have more money to lend. It sells their securities which the banks are forced to buy. That reduce their capital, giving them less to lend. As a result, they can change higher interest rate. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today, I would like to talk about unemployment in United States of America. The U.S. unemployment rate came in at 3.8 percent in March 2019, unchanged from the previous month figure and in line with market expectation. The number of unemployed persons decreased by 24,000 to 6.2 million while employment dropped by 201,000 to 156.7 million. The participant rate fell to 63% in March from 63.2 in February. Unemployment rate in the United States averaged 5.76 from 1948 until 2019, reaching an all-time high of 10.80% in November of 1982 and a record low of 2.50% in May of 1953. For your information, among the major workers group, the unemployment rate for adult men 3.6%, adult women 3.3%, teenagers 12.8%, White 3.4% and Black 6.7%, Asian 3.1% and Hispanic 4.7% shows little or no change in March.
In March, the number of long-term unemployment those jobless for 27 weeks or more was essentially unchanged at 1.3 million and accounted for 21.1% of the unemployed. The labor force participation rate fell 0.2 percentage point to 63.0% and has shown little movement or net over the past 12 months. The, the employment population ratio aged down 0.1% point to 60.6 percent in March and has been elder 60.6 percent or 60.7 percent since October 2018. There were 1.4 million person marginally attached to the labor force little different from a year earlier. Data are not seasonally adjust. The individual were not in the labor force wanted and were available for work and had looked for a job sometime in the prior 12 months, they looked for a job and they were not counted as unemployment because they had not searched for work in four weeks. Preceding the survey, among the marginally attached, there were 412,000 discouraged workers in March and about unchanged for a year earlier, data are not seasonally adjusted. Discouraged workers are person not currently looking for work because they believe no job are available for them and remaining 944,000 person marginally attached to the labor force in March had not searched for work for reason, uh, family, responsibilities and school attendance.